I think it's time I step back one of the previous videos that I made on perioral mound liposuction. Um, I said in the past that one of my favorite strategies for perioral mound liposuction is liposuction and some sort of tightening of the skin at least as a starting point for the perioral mound to be debulked and also to be sort of shrink wrapped down. One of my favorite technologies for this was Accutite uh, and this would be a standalone procedure to help debulk the perioral mound even if it's only half a cc or a cc of fat. But you know, ever since a lot of people have been coming to me uh, from across the country and even the world for evaluation and management of perioral mounds, I feel compelled uh, to be very open about sort of a more preferred approach to perioral mound uh, management than liposuction alone. If you are interested and you found me because you want to have this area next to your mouth or a shadow that extends down towards your chin improved or eliminated, and you're thinking about perioral mound liposuction, and I'm one of the few people that do it, apparently, um, stay tuned, because I have a surprise for you. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Jonathan Zelkin, a board certified plastic surgeon in Newport Beach, California. Uh, I'm pretty well known for management of the face in terms of facial sculpting and especially for buckle fat and perioral mound management, liposuction, facelift surgery, you name it. If you don't like the fullness here or if you don't like the shadow that evolves from it, then you know, you've, you've found me obviously either through YouTube or through other various means. Um, today I want to talk about uh, a series of prospective patients who have come to me for virtual consultations and in-person consultations for management of perioral mounds and I want to talk about how my tune has changed a little bit uh, in terms of the management of these areas. So, you know, what is the perioral mound? It's not a disease. Obviously it's a normal finding, but it can bother people and when it bothers you it can become a disease, especially if you sort of become fixated on it or if for one reason or another you feel that it's kind of getting in the way of your day-to-day -day functions because some other underlying, uh, you know, uh, perseveration with it or anything like that. So even though the perioral mound is a normal finding, it can become problematic if it affects the way you live and feel about yourself. Um, and so I take it very seriously, even though it seems like a really small nuisance and like a, a first world problem, uh, it's still something that obviously bothers people enough to either travel across the states or to visit me virtually um, to discuss this and, and ideally manage it. And I would say in the past few weeks, I've gotten about five or 10 consultations for perioral mountain liposuction alone. I'd say in about nine of these cases, nine out of ten, ninety percent, I did not recommend liposuction of the perioral mound and or radiofrequency skin tightening in the form of Accutite, which just one video ago I thought was a very valid starting point. And the reason that I don't offer that as a standalone procedure, and honestly when people ask me and they say, how many of these have you done? As a standalone procedure, I haven't done very many in terms of perioral mound liposuction. Is, is in, you know, and for one of the few people, I guess, in the country or even the world that offers this, why is it that I'm not doing it? Well, the truth is, I do perioral mound liposuction probably three to four times a week, but not as a standalone procedure, and that's a very, very important distinction. I think. Perioral mound liposuction is the tip of the iceberg. And just like I said, perioral mounds are not a disease. They're not really a syndrome either or a sequence, but you can think of them that way in terms of how I'm gonna frame the rest of this video. So what is a sequence? What is a syndrome? Sequences and syndromes in the medical community, for example, are kind of the same thing in the sense that a syndrome is a a constellation of either you know clinical findings or symptoms that are related to a single cause and a sequence is sort of the same thing but it, it kind of goes in order of events like one thing leads to another leads to another the perioral mound can be thought of this way and this is why doing liposuction of the perioral mound and or skin radiofrequency skin tightening alone may not be enough 
when we think of the perioral mound, we've got to think of it in the framework of a, of a jowl, either an early or an age-appropriate jowl, which is the lower extension of a perioral mound. And we've got to think about the bony framework that causes it. A lot of my other videos visit the topic of facial rivets. Rivets is just my lay term for cutaneous ligaments that connect the, the facial skeleton to the skin. And one of the most problematic rivets, in my opinion, for both facelifts and also for facial sculpting is the mandibular cutaneous ligament that occurs right here. And these ligaments <clears throat> are particularly frustrating if you're not an aging, if you don't have an aging face, uh, but they are frustrating if you have either a recessive or narrow jaw or chin. I mean, if these rivets are being sort of tethered, like reins, right here, it's really easy for the flesh of your face behind it to sort of fall over it like a wave. And when that happens, you start to get the framework and the underlying, you know, mechanism for developing a marionette line, as we call it, or melolabial fold, uh, or labial mental fold. You know, really, whatever you want to call it, the truth is, when you have bony insufficiency, if you want to call it that, then you are start you are setting yourself up for this wave to crash over. It's almost like an underwire bra. If you if you get rid of it, you know everything is nice and and mobile and unified. But once this gets stuck down, everything has an, basically a moment arm to work over. And I don't want to get too much into the physics of facial aging and facial uh, optimization. But the truth is, uh, if you have some bony issues there, you are set up for either a perioral mound, a jowl, and or uh, you know, a premature marionette line. And usually these things happen with unfavorable lighting, unflattering lighting. But it's really important to understand that if you have this underlying set of conditions, a jowl, maybe some prolapsing buckle fat, and uh, fullness at the corner of your mouth, it's gonna look like a big perioral mound, and it seems, at first glance, even to me, that liposculpture of this area is gonna be enough to make it go away, but more and more I'm finding that without addressing the ingredients of a jowl, without addressing any bony insufficiency at the jawline or the chin, we're just kind of chasing our tail. And I've found this in my own patients. When I've done liposculpture of just that area, it seems sometimes, even if I take a whole cc of fat out of the perioral mound, which is a lot, that you're gonna either get some scalping or depression in this area and or you're, not gonna, you're simply just not going to make that marionette line go away. So I talk about facelift being the king of operations or the queen of operations uh, for improving marionette folds. But the truth is, you know, Chin implants are also very effective because this is a way that you can undermine that mandibular cutaneous ligament and improve the bony framework um, and also face type. So if I were to say of all persons coming to me for perioral mound liposuction, maybe six months ago, 50% of them would have walked away with an Accutite procedure. Right now, about 98% of them, 90%, I would say nine out of 10 of the prospective patients I am recommending radio frequency skin tightening of some form in my practice i use face tight and liposculpture of the neck perioral mound and jowl not to mention in my facelifts the same thing happens the bottom line is addressing just the tip of the iceberg is uh, neglecting a lot of the other underlying issues that are causing this marionette line and the perioral fullness to occur so I think for the money, and I don't want to sound insensitive here, that face tight is a much more effective solution. It can help define the entirety of the jawline. It can improve perioral mounds. Um, that's a very effective strategy, um, whereas Accutite really should be reserved for thin faces when you have bony adequacy of the jawline. Uh, a lot of times in men, um, that is when doing that one out of 10, for example, that I think Accutite and uh, some liposculpture of the perioral mound becomes more relevant. So, this is a lot, but for some reason, this topic tends to attract very sophisticated, young and aging minds, and I feel that by being upfront with you, my you know, potential clientele, um, I wanna tell you how my practice is evolving on a day-to-day -day -day basis, and when a lot of people come to me for you know, Accutite and perioral mound liposuction and walk away with either a facelift or a face tight, I've also gotta ask myself the question, is this the best solution? Is, is liposculpture of this area enough? 
Um, and honestly, in the majority of cases, I don't think it is because there's so much more that goes into a perioral mound and or a marionette line than just a small amount of fat here alone. Now, I wish it does help everybody. I've seen really great results. I've shown good results in past videos. It's just that I think a more comprehensive strategy is called for. If this is a topic that fascinates you or, or you want to talk to me about this uh, on a more individual basis and see if you fall in that one out of 10 that would benefit from liposculpture and radio frequency tightening of the uh, perioral mound alone, I mean, that would be great. I mean, I, I think there is, a, there is definitely a place for that procedure and I think it is partially effective. Um, but I think overall, you've, you've heard my opinions on this topic. It's not easy for me to backpedal a little bit in terms of previous recommendations. Um, this is probably the first time I've done it, and I think uh, there's a reason for it. If you want to learn more about this, definitely ask questions. Discuss your concerns in the comments section below. As you know, I try really hard to respond to these questions and concerns, and certainly turn your notifications on, subscribe, and I will try my hardest to make more videos like this. As you know, you've seen a lot of YouTube videos. The best thing you can do is subscribe. That helps my channel a lot, uh, and certainly motivates me to continue on this pathway of making great videos. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day.